And I'm just So good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to St. Michael and All Angels online. It's the 13th Sunday of Trinity, 6th of September. Um, my name is Sarah Spence. I'm one of the church wardens, along with Janice, as you know. Um, <clears throat> this morning, Tony is leading us, and we have a reflection by John Fox from Tear Fund. Um, so, any notices to say, Janice? Um, it was just to say a, a huge welcome and a huge thank you to John for joining us today. He's, he's joining us all the way from Sheffield, which we were smiling about earlier on. Um, but I'm sure he'll tell you a little bit about his background. He not only works full time for Shelter, but he's also a volunteer speaker for TIFF and so a, a busy and obviously a passionate person. So really looking forward to what you have to say to us this morning, John. And then also um, just to say thank you, Andrew, for, for the bells this morning. Um, we said goodbye to Mary this week and um, the Lord's My Shepherd that Andrew has just played um, was very special to Mary and Andrew. So it was a lovely tribute and a, a lovely remembrance to, to Mary. So thank you for that. So thank you and we look forward to um, spending the service with all of you now. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. Over to you, Tony. Yes, welcome again, uh, everybody. Um, we'll start with the call to worship, which is Psalm 96. Uh, it says, oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honour and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendour. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. For he is coming. He is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the people with truth. It's a psalm of praise, a psalm of assurance that God is in charge of the world and a psalm of future things, the return of Jesus and a righteous judgment. So let's prepare ourselves as we come before the Lord in prayer. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to the Lord, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. And we'll just pause a while while we um, come before God and think about the past week. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And uh, a, a further prayer in the bowl if you can uh, respond please. 
O Lord of all creation, all over the world your people gather. We are held in your love. Your people hunger, hunger for hope. We are held in your love. Your people hunger for justice. We are held in your love. Your people hunger for unity. We are one in your love. Make us one in your love. That your name may be known. And our first hymn is Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. We've started in a, a very praiseworthy way, hopefully. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring. Ransom, healed, restored, forgiven, who like thee his praise should sing. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven. Our psalm is Psalm 149, so we can all say this together. Praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in its maker, let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with victory. Let the faithful exult in glory. 
Let them sing for joy on their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with fetters and their nobles with chains of iron, to execute on them the judgment decree. This is the glory of all his faithful ones. Praise the Lord. And Dave is going to lead us um, in our Old Testament reading. Is, is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. And Peter is going to give us our um, New Testament reading. A reading from Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves his neighbour has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in the sentence, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbour, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what hour it is, how it is full time now for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. Let us then cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us conduct ourselves becomingly as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in immorality and licentiousness, not in quarrelling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. And uh, another warm welcome to John. Um, our speaker is going to be leading us in our reflection. Um, thank you for taking the time out, John, to, to do this. And, and once again, uh, hopefully you feel at, at home with this uh, group of uh, brothers and sisters in uh, Habersig or wherever we are. Over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tony. Um, and thank you very much to everybody for having me to, to come and speak. It's a real privilege uh, to be able to do these kind of talks and to meet with people that um, are so faithfully supporting the work of Tear Fund, are interested in the work of Tear Fund uh, and want to know more. Um, this is the first of the Zoom sort of talks that I've done. Um, so we'll see how the, the, the tech goes. Um, fairly used to using it within a work context, but, but not within uh, this kind of situation. So. Um, there is a big thank you to, from Tear Fund uh, to, to you as a church and many individuals, I think, within the church who, who support the work of Tear Fund. And I, I do want to say that at the top of the, the talk. Um, it's really very gratefully uh, received and uh, just be assured of, of the prayers. Uh, the, the team at Tear Fund, the speaker's team and the church's team um, do keep all the different churches and, and supporters in their prayers uh, on a regular basis. Uh, so as, as Tony said, and as uh, said at the top of the service, I'm John, I live in Sheffield, um, I work for Shelter, but I uh, speak as volunteer for, for Tear Fund. I've got, uh, I live with my wife and we've got three kids, two of whom have, have flown the coop uh, and we're left now with, uh, with just our 16 year old at home. I've uh, been working at home ever since uh, March basically. So uh, the coronavirus, which is, is really what I'm going to be speaking about, has, has had quite a big impact in some ways for, for us. And I think that leads into um, what, uh, what I'm going to start saying. So if I share my screen, let's see if we can 
Uh, let's see if we can do this. And whether that works. Is that sharing? What have you got? Nice pictures and houses there. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> let's just um, let's. Uh, can I check? Can you see a tear on screen or can you see? Yes, we can. We can, John. Sorry. Yes, it says thank you. Oh, fantastic. We've got the right screen. Hooray. That's uh, that's good news. Um, so, um, yeah, it's uh, basically just wanting to uh, think about the impact of coronavirus uh, that we have had um, and then maybe reflect a little bit on what the impact has been for other folk around the world. We're in very challenging times, we all know that. Um, this global pandemic has affected millions. Uh, it's, it's really kind of shaken our society uh, and changed so much of our individual and everyday lives. Um, it's been a dark time for many, uh, and you know, we know that the coronavirus will have affected uh, many, many of you in, in Hathersage and uh, as, well as, as well as around the country. It's affected areas of our, our freedom of movement um, our ability to to see family um, it's affected our physical health but it's also affected our mental health in in some cases and and our ability it's curbed our lifestyle um, and so you know we uh, like I say the the team at Tear Fund have been praying for uh, the the supporter churches throughout this throughout this lockdown if I just now just move on see if I can get it to move on it's not I knew the tech would cause problems it always does I, I, I can help with that John <laughs> do you know what I ought to be able to I ought to be able to um, I ought to be able to do this thing as I work in IT there you go that's a uh, but at, at the moment all I'm showing is a blank screen it's the fact that t uh, PowerPoint likes to show have you got two monitors yeah yeah Right. I would, what I, I would unplug one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to. How's that? Can you see the screen? Can you see the the the, the slide quite yep. well there? Yeah. Yep. We'll go. We'll go with this. Okay. So um, we've heard the uh, the reading from Isaiah read to us, um, and it's a, it's quite a challenging reading. Um, there's just an extract there on the screen uh, around. Uh, the kind of the the challenge from God it's challenge and an encouragement from God his encouragement to to walk in ways that that really please him um, and in this passage you can see that the the people of Israel they've got so focused on the kind of practices and the things they should they shouldn't be doing uh, and the the kind of the um, and the, and the things to abstain from and the practices of, of God that they'd forgotten the command to love. They'd forgotten the command to, uh, to reach out to people and include those that are, were outside of their, um, of their inner circle. They'd forgotten to reach out to the poor and needy. And, and in fact, they were kind of known for what they didn't do. They, they didn't eat and they, they fasted and they abstained from various things, but they left out the poor and needy. They were known for what they didn't do instead of what they did do. And actually God loves us enough to call us out when, when we get into that trap. He calls us out and says, you know, that's not, that's not the way I wanted things to be. That's not the kind of fasting I was looking for, that you would just stop eating or that you would just, uh, you would just have certain kind of, rhythm to your lifestyle it's actually to be proactive to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and break every yoke to share your food with the hungry and provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not turn away from your own flesh and blood flesh and blood and then then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear so God is, is kind of reaching out, saying, this, this is what I'm looking for. It's, it's not just a kind of a, a don't do this, don't do this, don't touch that, don't be like that. But it's a proactive reach out. Be these kind of people, be these kind of positive people. And he's calling us to this true worship. 
what I want you to do uh, now is is to I'm actually going to call sort of ask us to, to reflect a bit and um, if it if it helps you to reflect maybe even just cl close your eyes so that you can in your own mind's eye conjure up the images uh, that you're that, that, that you're kind of thinking about and first of all I want to imagine everything that that we've gone through so coronavirus what what has coronavirus meant for you um, for me it's been a time uh, of isolation from family I only just recently saw my 92 year old mother um, who lives down in the West Country um, and my sisters who all live down there so uh, I hadn't seen them for over a year which is the longest I think I've ever gone not seeing them uh, and for many of us that might be the case it's been a time of of in of kind of hunkering down into a much smaller scale life for me uh, the four walls of my house for many months becoming kind of uh, really apart from a daily bit of exercise becoming my life and my my world um, it's been for us a, a, a trying time due to various things going on in our our family and I think many of us will have, have faced those kind of things I don't know how it's been for for you as individuals as families as as couples what I'd like to invite you to do is to imagine uh, what that would be like if you lived in Cox's Bazaar. Cox's Bazaar is uh, a refugee camp in Bangladesh, or it's the site of a, of a refugee camp in Bangladesh, which is the world's largest refugee camp. Um, it's home to the Rohingya people who fled Myanmar uh, and they fled there for for their safety. So you've gone there, you've you've left everything behind uh, from your home. You've made it across the border into Bangladesh, and uh, and now you're living in this closely packed camp with uh, over one million people. Uh, and then at the beginning of April, uh, having having fled that you uh, that the, the the troubles and the persecution maybe from home living in this place now you then hear that coronavirus has has uh, come to the camp and you look around you and you know that in this environment uh, social distancing is going to be impossible and you know that you've got limited medical resources you wonder how you're going to be cared for if you get it or if your family get it. And there are certainly no intensive care beds and respirators uh, and uh, health service to look after you. So let's just pause a moment. And as we reflect, uh, I'll pray. Lord, come heal our land and heal, heal the land in, uh, in, in Bangladesh and many other places like it, Lord, where this is such a a challenging time in your name amen okay please uh, please do open your eyes if you still haven't closed bangladesh uh they re they reported cases of uh coronavirus as i say in april um it was a recent article in in the guardian that that reported that um the camp in Bangladesh is more densely populated than uh, many of our world, of the world's largest cities. The, there's no space for social distancing. People live in these tiny, crowded shelters. Uh, very often, there are twelve people living in each of these uh, shelters. They share the same well and the same toilet. Healthcare is very is a very short supply. Uh, and other illnesses are already rife because of the shortage of clean water and soap. Uh, I'm going to tell you the story of a lady called Mima. I think her name's been changed actually. Um, but Mima is one of these, is representative of, of, of one of these uh, folk that ended up in the, the camp at Cox's Bazaar. She lived uh, in a a village in Myanmar. They'd lived there for generations. Her husband and herself lived there. They're not wealthy, uh, but they lived a peaceful life in a small village in Myanmar. 
uh, they had a young baby and they were just starting out in their kind of uh, journey as a young couple learning the joys and, and trials of parenthood um, many of us have, have been through uh, but they were surrounded by the stability of the community that they had grown up in. And that all changed on one day. Uh, it even, we had the details, it was a Wednesday. So uh, a normal Wednesday as far as they were concerned. And the families were just waking up, the voices of children were shattered by gunshots uh, as militants had come to their village. And over the course of that day, in the hours that followed, uh, their peace was shattered. Their lives were changed forever. Um, the violence went on until evening. Uh, Mima reported that people were shot like birds. Mima could hear her son crying, but she couldn't get to him because she was being assaulted and beaten. And by the end of that day, uh, 55 of the villagers were dead, including Mima's son. Most homes were on fire and many of the women had suffered in the same way as Mima. The village was now filled with sounds of mourning and weeping as the families gathered the bodies of their loved ones. Mima, her husband and sister-in-law walked for two days to reach the river uh, that marks the border with Bangladesh and they found shelter in a tiny crowded camp here in Cox's Bazaar. And for a while they seemed safe, uh, but then coronavirus arrived and began to spread. <laughs> the the Tear Fund country director in Bangladesh uh, said this, it's, it's difficult to deal with this complex issue as resources are few. The infrastructure is not adequate and the medical facilities are not adequate. People are out of their jobs, particularly the migrants. The daily wage labourers and the poor are vulnerable. They are suffering due to hunger and unemployment and lack of health facilities. Uh, you know, I, I I balk slightly at sharing some of the details of that story because it's so horrific and I, I, you know, I, I know that it would have, oh, it's quite a shocking story for us to hear where I'm in my comfortable house. I've had lockdown in, in the comfort of, of our house. We've, we've not gone without food. Uh, we've not gone without, without care. Um, but I think it is, it is so important for us to know and understand exactly what some folk have had to to endure with coronavirus then on top of and the mission of tear fund is clear uh, the mission of tear fund is to go where the need is greatest um, where it's the messiest where it's the hardest where it's the darkest and in those places to bring light and in those places to bring relief and in those places to bring hope, the hope of Jesus, the love of Christ in those places. One of the reasons why I support Tear Fund and I, and I do this volunteer speaking for Tear Fund is because they work through local partners they don't go in themselves as being uh, the people with all the answers. They don't go in just with resources and, and give out uh, lots of, of goodies to people. They work through local partners. And in most countries where Tear Fund works, they work through the local church. It's the local body of Christ that is then the agent of Christ's love in that community. They work through local agencies and they work through churches like you. I, I was so impressed actually at the beginning of this call, seeing you come together 
Um, I'd love to get a screenshot actually of, of everybody on the call because uh, I think it would shame uh, certainly some of my my colleagues at shelter who don't like to put their video on and feel a bit kind of awkward uh, seeing everybody there with with your video on smiling talking together having mastered all that the the technology was fantastic and it's churches like yours churches in these places that are doing the work of Christ in reaching out and Tear Fund is there to support and, and help them to do that. So what is, what is Tear Fund doing? Here's a, a, um, one of those infographic things that you get to give you some information. Those are the countries at the bottom where Tear Fund is working across the world. Uh, countries including Bangladesh, but, but uh, many other countries where the, the COVID-19 global response is happening. This, uh, as you'll see on that, the, uh, the, the timing of this was back in June. That was the latest statistics that I was able to get. But at that point, um, they had reached over 33,000 people with hygiene and sanitation kits. Over 5,700 food parcels distributed over 502 water stations installed so water stations giving clean water to a number of, of families and communities and over 91,000 people reached with hygiene messages the messages we've all been getting the same hygiene message about washing your hands about about keeping yourself uh, uh, clean and safe from from the virus uh, and this is amazing and it will have been it, that was back in June it will have risen since then um, and it's amazing but there are still so many more communities and people to reach reaching out with that kind of proactive love and action that we saw in the Isaiah passage so what is it the tier fund is is kind of what is the, the ask and I, I make no bones about it um, obviously Tier Fund is, is doing this, but they need the support of, of folk and churches like yourselves to, to, help, to help this to happen. So what is Tier Fund asking uh, us to do? Well, as a, a slide there, just on uh, some of those things that Tier Fund are doing around the prevention messaging, hygiene and sanitation, and food support. So Tear Fund is, is asking us to pray, first and foremost, to pray for churches around the world to be the hands and feet of Jesus. As we've seen that, that call from Isaiah. To counter the, um, the misinformation, just in, like in our country, there's, there are lots of people uh, spreading misinformation. Uh, and rumours around the uh, the origins of the virus, the the impact of the virus, and Tear Fund is working closely to to make sure that the the best and most accurate information is being given to people. And people's to pray for people whose livelihoods have been affected, as in our country, uh, people are being uh, are being faced with unemployment. They're being faced. They're faced with uh, lack of work. Uh, they don't have uh, dishy rishi uh, within their countries to uh, to help to uh, ease that with with uh, furlough payments. In many of these countries, if you're on a daily wage or a daily migrant labourer, maybe where you just get picked up in the morning uh, in a truck and and you get picked from a group of people to work for the day, that kind of work. If you're if you're isolating or if people are being quarantined that kind of work's just gone you've lost your income so please consider the work of tear fund consider these these situations in your prayers and then you can give uh i think it was a salvation army um uh, I think it was, it was the, the founder of the Salvation Army who said that uh, money is the muscle, muscle of mission. Um, and all of these things do cost money. Uh, it costs money to, to, to provide these services, to, to enable the churches in these countries to, to help their communities. And so there's just some, 
some sort of suggested or some uh, ideas there that if if you were able to give 15 pounds well that's five five families a month's supply of uh, of kind of the kind of hygiene essentials that they would need 50 pounds health training and food support to three families for three months and possibly as a church uh, or or a group of community uh, 200 families with a month's supply of life-saving essentials for 600 pounds just some ideas but anything and i, I really uh, want to stress this if if you're able to give anything um you know two pounds five pounds whatever would be would be so very gratefully received um and and to say thank you so much for uh, being interested in the work of tier fund thank you so much for inviting me to come and speak and, and share this time with you share your service with you um it's actually it's lovely to share a live service i was saying at the top of the service that st tom's has been doing pre-recorded facebook services and they're, and they're great they're lovely but there's something different sharing with people who are commenting together and are talking together and are sharing like this and and it's lovely it's it's really been lovely to to be part of of what you've been uh doing this morning if you were able to give um I mean, if you were able to give as individuals that link there which i think is on the pew sheet um uh, the tier fund forward slash uh covid response if it will if, if you do it will prompt you uh, it will say what prompted you to give and if you choose the church service option i tested this just the other day um and follow the instructions to look up the name of of your church the best way to do that is just enter hathersage in the dialog box and that will uh, select st michael's hathersage when I tried starting with St. Michael's or Saint, uh, it went all a bit haywire, it didn't like it. There's quite a few saints out there in the church names, uh, but Hathersage narrows it down to you and I think one other fairly quickly. Um, just to say, uh, I've, I've got a little bit of shared lineage with St. Michael's. I was once a lay assistant at St. Michael and All Angels in uh, Sutton Manor in St. Helens. So uh, it's quite nice to be sharing back with another St. Michael's uh, today. But anyway, um, if you were able to put where you where you uh, where you kind of what prompted you to give in St Michael's, then it enables Tear Fund to then come back uh, to your church leaders and and say thank you personally. Thank you so much for having me uh, to speak. Uh, I hope that's given you a little bit more of an understanding of the work of Tear Fund, of the kind of need and the kind of both the kind of desperate need that people are facing and the situations that some people find themselves in, but also the support and uh, assistance that uh, Tear Fund are giving through local partners and churches. If I can just pray and then I'll, I'll hand back over. Father God, thank you so much for St. Michael and All Angels Hathersage and um, the people of God who meet there. Thank you, Father, for this community uh, who have carried on meeting, supporting and loving one another over coronavirus, finding creative ways to share their life together. Father, I pray that you would bless them in their ups and downs, their trials, tribulations, joys, uh, victories and sorrows, Lord. And I pray, Father God, that you would enable them to shine as a light Lord, that you would help them to and lead them and prompt them in whatever way you've got right for them, Father God, to be part of your mission uh, in the world, that their light might shine forth and people see uh, your goodness through them. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, thank you very much, John, for that. Um, thank you for the challenge. Um, and it's reminded us this all really the things we take for granted, uh, flicking a switch on a wall for light, turning a tap for, for clean water. And uh, whenever we're challenged like this, we're always reminded that uh, we have things so easy here in, in the West. Um, and thank you for praying for us as well. We're, we're a mixed bunch. We might not all go to St. Michael's, but um, you know, we love Jesus in, in, in Hathersage and we're part of the church, you know, the call out ones of God that, that try and make things happen. So uh, thank you again for your, for your prayer.
Um, we're going to gather now and say the Apostles' Creed um, and, and declare our faith, which is so important to us day by day. So if we all say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And uh, Elizabeth is uh, going to lead us in our prayers of intercession, uh, the Collect and the Lord's Prayer. Thank you. Our prayers this morning are for the many and very varied people we may or may not know, but all made in God's image and created and loved by him. We pray for the refugees that we've just heard about, who've already experienced so much trauma for being forced to flee from their homes. We pray for their peace, their healing and their protection. We think of the Tier Fan staff as they continue to try and reach the most vulnerable people in such challenging circumstances. And especially that the coronavirus doesn't spread in the refugee camps and the temporary settlements. We remember too those working in other organisations that we support financially as a church, both in this country and overseas. Lord, in your mercy, here are our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the nations internationally, nationally and locally. For their individual integrity, that they would work for the good of all. We pray for those who lead and encourage the worldwide church. Give them your wisdom and courage in decisions they have to make in their ministry of the gospel. And today we pray for Jude Davis in her new work with Church Army. And we pray for Paul and Lucy. We thank you for them. And we pray for them as they prepare to live and minister here. Please go before them in all their preparations and encourage us to continue to pray for them and the life of, and mission of all in our benefice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer as schools and colleges and universities resume in a new and different way of learning. A few minutes of quiet for the prayers for those that we may know personally who are involved. And then for the children in our villages, for teachers and assistants, for governors in our local schools and for parents often concerned but supporting them. We pray for each of them in your name, Lord, in your mercy. Hear hear our our prayer. Prayer. And we pray for those we may not know so well, but who we rely on, those who provide our daily needs, shop workers, farmers, those who transport goods or who are involved in travel for the police and fire services, and especially those in the local mountain rescue teams here in the valley who help at critical times. For all who are involved in care and health care in its many forms, thank you for them and please help us to understand their enormous workload and remind us to show our gratitude. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We've all been and continue to be so affected by the pandemic. Lord, please meet the concerns of those with work or financial concerns and worries. Often such enormous concerns. We continue to pray for those who are still suffering 
either with their own illness or through the loss of a loved one. Praying especially for families of those in our church and community who've lost someone during this very difficult time. We name them as we think of John and Paul, Margaret, Jenny, and so recently Mary. And for those two we may know personally. We pray that their families would continue to know your peace and presence in their loss, as well as our love and support. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And just in a few moments, we pray for ourselves and for each other. Thank you, Creator God, for making us the person and people that we are, unique but made in your image. Please continue to mould and use us and see your image in those we meet this week and assure us of your constant love, care and purpose for each one of us. And so we pray the collect together, reminding us of the challenge we have to share and pass on Christ's call and life-changing message. So we pray. Almighty God, God, who called your, your church to bear witness that you were in Christ reconciling the world to yourself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we join too in saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your, your name. Your will be done. Your, king, will, your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Elizabeth, for leading, in, uh, leading us in our time of prayer. Our closing hymn is, We Have a Gospel to Proclaim, Good News for All Throughout the Earth, the Gospel of a Saviour's Name. We sing his glory, tell his word. Thank you. 
and our closing prayer. May the mission of Jesus be our constant hope. May the Lord help us to reach out with love. May he grant us the strength to proclaim his good news. May almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And a blessing. To God the Father who created the world, to God the Son who redeemed the world, to God the Holy Spirit who sustains the world, be all praise and glory now and forever. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve God and our neighbour. Amen. Thank you, Tony. I'm good to stop recording now.